I caught it. That, that was a catch. Hey, all right. This is that same platform that I've cut down and changed probably six or seven times experimenting with the wing configurations. Last week, I had the wings straight and back and then doing a lot of studying this week. Um, I think what I'm gonna need is something along these platforms. I need more aileron on the wingtip. So the wingtip does not stall first, it stalls last. I need elevators and canards and then more vertical stabilizer surfaces. So I've got some vertical stabilizers underneath as well. They also act as motor protectors. What I'm after is super high alpha. That's what I'm trying to do. Is when you're doing control surfaces, whenever your control surfaces or your wing moves past about 40, 45 degrees, you just start snow plowing the air. So if I'm going up like that, now I'm trying to go up, but now I'm snow plowing the air and it stalls out and drops the nose. That's why I have the switch where I hit it and it faces back into the wind. So that's for pitch, up and down, yeah. and then roll. Rudder, I just got the thrust vectoring. When I do the high alpha, I hit the switch and look at that. See the wing tips go up, and arts go down, and then I can move them from there. So that's when I go up like this. I go into high alpha mode, and I can adjust things from there. Now last week, I thought it was gonna crash, and it kinda did. This week, I think it's gonna work. Okay, very nice, good. I put that happy cam in the front to give it a little bit nose weight because I knew it would be a little tail heavy with all that stuff in the back. It's very Frankenstein-y because I'm just testing the idea. When I make the next one, I'll sturdy it all up. It just saves me time working with what I got just to prove the idea. All right, let's try our high alpha maneuvers. High alpha switch. Oh, nice! Look at that! It's rocking. That was pretty good. Now the wings are moving around a little bit, but it's pretty breezy. That wasn't really the wings stalling. That was just the wings getting blown around. Well, that's what I'll tell myself anyways. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. No, uh-oh, uh -oh, don't uh-oh. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. No, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, that's cool. Yeah, that does its high alpha real good. All right, let me land it. Whoa! <laughs> That's right, just waving at you. <laughs> hey, how you doing? How's it fly? <laughs> That's a nice plane, what do you call it? Oh, I call it the... <laughs> Alright, let's now try cutting stuff off and seeing what I don't need. What don't you need? And so I've tried with the wings back, I've tried forward sweeping wings, I've tried with leading edge slats, different ideas with the canards. I've had a plane with the, with the canards that swing out tried swing wings. There's a lot of stuff that I've tried that I just haven't had a chance to video at all that you haven't seen. Now, what I've been basically coming down, being forced to find the common denominator is a few things that I need. I need to have more control surface on the wing tip rather than on the inside. That's why the aileron looks backwards like this, where it's bigger out here, smaller in here. I need to have a vertical stabilizer setup system that it gets stability at high alpha. Because when you're like this, you're not getting any air on your tail and it starts to go out there. So I need other means of keeping myself stable vertically. Uh, the canards, you gotta be careful because the bigger these are, the more drag they cause for the rest of the plane, which now you need a bigger stabilizer to counteract the drag. So I can't get too big on the canards. But I do need the canards for when I come up like this to get my nose from stalling and to come back up, I need to have that setting where it angles back in like that. The way this is all mixed with three onboard mixers, one servo reverser, and uh, a meatloaf sandwich. But what's funny is that I'm being forced to find the conclusion that, here, take a look. Now that's basically the same setup as an SU-37. So what's, what'll be nice is when I'm done and I have all the numbers and measurements and dimensions that I need, which is what I'm getting from this, I can then build the next one uh, off the cosmetic look of the SU-37. Basically, your eye will see an SU-37, but 
but the aerodynamics will see all the things that I know that it needs. And I know what it needs because I've tested so many different wing configurations. It's like playing Battleship, you know that game? It's like you fire all these shots and you figure out where your opponent is not. So you're crossing these all off the list and it's narrowing down of what would be successful. Then once you start to find what works, boom, 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 it just goes all right in a row. So now I know not only what works, but I know what doesn't work. So when people go, oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? I tried it, tried it, tried it. it doesn't work for these reasons this is the best setup for what I'm doing that's why it takes so long but that's why it's so good when it's done all right so let's try cutting stuff off and see if we don't need them if you're a guy that does scratch building and test flying what I always recommend is, is always add way more stuff to your plane so when you get out in the field you can start cutting stuff off and so right now I'm making notes okay here's the the wing size and setup I'll cut a couple inches off try it cut a couple inches off try it and keep going down to where it becomes unstable then I know, okay, here is unstable, so right in here is where I want to make the next one. And now I have some solid numbers to go off of. You can feel it slightly faster, less drag. High alpha test. Well, it wasn't better. I don't know if it was worse, but it definitely wasn't better. I basically just asked myself, is that better or worse? It's easy to kind of have a elimination question, yes or no. Some other rogue factors is the wind. It's hard to tell if that's the wind or the plane. And also the pilot. I've never flown a plane like this, so if I had a week to fly it, I'd be able to develop the skills a lot better. So it may be perfect, and I don't know it, because I just can't fly it. I well, didn't wave to you this time. <laughs> All right, I wanted to try cutting a bunch off, seeing how this would work here. <gasps> Now I have a more narrow wingspan. <laughs> now it looks silly. I know, it looks like a frog toad. <laughs> okay, that affected the CG. Well, it had an effect in the weight, really. It's affected where the plane is getting its lift. So I'm now getting less lift in the back and more lift in the front, comparably. So it's wanting to nose up a little bit. All right, try the high alpha. Not bad. Wow, definitely not worse. Wow. That might possibly be a little bit better, hard to say, but it's not worse. I do have a center of gravity issue because I've lost that lift in the back. Flop. Let's try it without the canards. All right, I'm gonna take off the canards and see how that works now. Since I was getting too much lift in the front, because I took the wing tips off, now I'm taking off some lift from the nose. Take off. And that should balance it out. Now I basically have a SU-27. Uh, What's the one without canards? It seems faster. Yeah, those canards in the front of an airplane produce a lot of drag that then just runs along the rest of the airplane. So I think on the next plan, I'm gonna make the canards pretty small. Try and find the right ratio of have them do what I want them to do, but not be any bigger than they have to because they have a pretty heavy side effect of their drag that they produce. Yeah, look at that, it's harder to keep the nose up. You can feel it right away. It's harder to keep the nose up without those canards when I do the high alpha. Because once my nose starts to drop, stall out, I don't have the canards there to lift me back up. After six prototypes, I now have enough information to start on the first possible, uh, you know, flyable plane. Well, the batteries were dead. <laughs> Some good tips for the scratch builders and guys that do their own experimental planes. I'm finally going into Metal Gear servos because when I'm doing stuff like this where you're crashing a lot or you're, you're moving a heavy load on the servos like moving motors and stuff, the nylon gears, the carbonite gears, they're just not strong enough. They break too fast and you're just spending too much money in repairs. So I've been using the HS65 Metal Gears and those have been really great but they're like 35 bucks. Grayson has now got some Metal Gear servos for about 20 bucks. How nice is that? That's a nice plane, what do you call it? Oh, I call it the... <laughs>